There's absolutely no way around sin. Psalm 51.5 states, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So if someone says that they are without sin, I need you to turn the other way and run as fast as you can. But when Christians sin, the reactions vary. Oftentimes, we as Christians categorize sinning into big and small, low-level sins or major sins. While I understand this, and yes, there's various consequences to whatever the sin is, it's important to remember that Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice and died on the cross for all sins. This is not to say that we shouldn't be in constant pursuit of living a set-apart life. I just want to make it clear that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. The world says that we're hypocrites and often uses our sin to justify their own. Other Christians may even use our sins as proof that we aren't even saved. But believe it or not, we oftentimes offer the most brutal judgment against our own selves. We bring on the guilt and shame from the sin and it easily becomes a part of our DNA. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And in this video, I'll be discussing three dangerous lies Christians who struggle with sin often believe. The first lie is that perfection is attainable. If this was the case, there would not be a reason for the gospel or the good news. God in human form as Jesus was the only perfect human to walk the earth. No one outside of heaven is perfect. No matter how hard you try to not sin, you won't win. We live in a fallen world, and because of this, perfection is not attainable. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians quote-unquote leave the faith because perfectionism has become an idol. It's sad, but it's true. I want you all to know that God is a loving Father and wants the best for you. Your good deeds are like filthy rags compared to how awesome and compassionate he truly is. So I encourage you to not focus on perfection, instead focus on his perfect love for you. Christians can get confused with Matthew 5:48, which says to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Jesus is referring to God's standard we should strive for. It takes a daily commitment to renew our minds and Jesus understands the reality that we fall short of his glory all the time. That's why he died for our sins, so we could be in the right standing with God the Father. God is not angry because of your imperfections. It grieves the Holy Spirit when we as Christians sin, but that does not decrease the love and admiration he has for us. As long as we're on this side of heaven, we will sin. Our being made completely righteous will have to wait until we die or the rapture occurs. The second lie Christians who struggle with sin believe is that their salvation or profession of faith in Jesus Christ is not real. This plays into the first lie because some say that because I don't live a perfect life that I think I should means that I was never saved to begin with. The mind easily plays tricks on us, and this is an unhealthy way of living life, especially if you profess that Jesus Christ is the Lord over your life. Let's be clear on this. God hates sin, and sinning is bad, but he does not hate you. We were created in his image, and he desires for you to know that. We can't save ourselves. We needed God's grace, so it's impossible to live the Christian life in our own strength. Exhaustion would quickly occur if you find yourself being your own savior, and this is in complete opposition to how God calls us to live. God's grace and supernatural strength is still needed to provide the strength for obedience. Per Wayne Stiles, you cannot out the grace of God. God the Father never abandons his children. I'm a father of three and couldn't imagine rejecting my kids because of their sin. My wife and I struggle at times to find the right parenting style to ensure that our kids are abiding by the rules. But when they live in opposition to our desires, it does not mean that we put them up for adoption. No matter what, our love for them will never run dry, and that's how God is. Conviction is a huge clue that the Spirit of God is working in your life. I encourage you to meditate on this. God sends tests. The devil sends temptations. Your eternal resting place was sealed the moment you accepted Jesus into your heart. The third lie is that because my sin is too great, God hates me and will never forgive me. To be clear, no matter what you do, God does not hate you. 
Romans 5, 8 says, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christians struggling with sin can make destructive choices. And yes, you should not be proud of those choices. But that doesn't mean that God has written you off and hates your very existence. It's easy to fall for the lie that tells us we crossed a point of no return with God. Pride comes to my mind thinking about this. God's forgiveness is incomprehensible. And although we think we have the capacity to articulate what his forgiveness truly means, it's still somewhat of a mystery. There may be lifelong consequences for your sins, but God's grace always offers forgiveness. He has given all of us an opportunity to eternal life. The Lord has given every Christian the promise that if you have believed in Jesus who died for your sins, you are now a child of God and not of Satan. The enemy tempts us with shiny objects that are appealing, and once we make the choice to partake in said activity that's opposite of God's desire for our life, the devil then quickly shows back up and tries to torment us. This is his way of manipulating us to think that God despises and hates us. Don't believe the lie because the role of the adversary is to kill, steal, and destroy. So let me know what you think of these three dangerous lies that I've talked about. Can you relate? And if so, what have you done specifically to fight against these destructive thoughts? Your comments below are greatly appreciated. And if you're looking to deepen your relationship with God, feel free to email me right now at lifecoachjscott at gmail.com to take advantage of your free one hour coaching session. Content such as this is oftentimes suppressed on social media platforms. So please take a moment to like and subscribe in order for the valuable content like I create will be shot up the YouTube algorithm. If you've not remembered anything else, Please know that God loves you and will never leave you nor forsake you. Continue to abide in him and know that your life truly matters. Be safe and God bless. Peace.